Set the Captives Free. This poem was commissioned for the birthday of Emmett Till for recognition of that, that birthday. And I didn't know how to start writing this poem. There's a theater that I began attending virtually during lockdown called Theater of War, which uses 2000 year old classic Greek and mainly Greek plays as ways to discuss things that are happening currently. So they've, there have been uh, plays that we focused on, on HIV and AIDS, on the COVID crisis, where the actors were Broadway actors and nurses in COVID units. All of these things were really very interesting. And then there was a production called The Suppliants, which was from an Aeschylus play that's 2,000 plus years old. And it was The Suppliants Ukraine, because the play The Suppliants is about a group of women who are refugees and who are having difficulty being accepted in a new country. So it makes sense and it sounds right. And there were all of these Ukrainian actors. There was one young girl, a 12 year old named Kira Mishurska. And not only was she an excellent actress, but at the end of the production, the actors were asked questions and she said that she wasn't really going to answer the question but she had something to say and she started to cry. And it was a, a switch from, from being an actor. You saw that the actor dissolved and the child emerged and she talked about how her theater director had hid in a very small theater, 40 people to keep them safe. They were in the basement of the theater. And she also talked about the fact that bodies had been buried in her grandmother's backyard because people were dying and cemeteries were full. People were buried where they fell. There was also another girl whose name I don't know who was talking in the discussion. She was Nicaraguan. And she talked about the fact that it was unsafe for her to even be on this call. She wasn't supposed to be using internet. She wasn't supposed to be discussing ideas about freedom and government misbehaviors. All of that was very dangerous. So I don't know who she was. But after hearing these two young people, these two children, talk about the ways that they loved democracy, and sought freedom, I was able to start writing the poem. Obviously, Emmett Till's freedom was taken from him. And this is a country that, that is built to support the idea of freedom, but doesn't always make certain that it's available to all of its citizens. So there are some lines that repeat in this poem, which has a video presentation. And they say, there are shadows at the edges of happiness because there is hope even in the worst of times. And there is sunlight in basement corners, but there is also fairness held back by the wicked and wonder that's released by the fair. It is what we choose to see and what we decide to do with it that determines whether, how, and in what ways we will seek our own liberty and liberty for others. I should also note, because it might have caught some people by surprise, that there is a statement about a man lynched in a Minnesota spring afternoon and people might expect that they will see George Floyd or some representation of him, but it was a man from a hundred years before hanging from a tree. So Minnesota lynches black people. It's different centuries, different times, and there were always people watching 
in the piece that's shown in the video presentation of this poem, in that photograph. There are people around having a picnic and pointing at the body. This was entertainment for a white community. And when George Floyd died, as we know, there were people around who were trying to save him. So, the, so what happened to these black men was the same. The community responses were, were different. It was a hard poem to write, but what helped me was was children who are living in war, who are fighting for democracy and will die for it. That was something that they both said. Most adults in the United States are not willing to die for their beliefs. These are children who are willing to die for democracy, to retain it in Ukraine where it is new and to get it in Nicaragua, where it goes in and out, depending on who's in, in power. So I thank them, because I rarely get stuck. I rarely get writer's block. But they were very helpful. And Kira, the Ukrainian girl, is in this show. I shared the video poem with her, and it quite moved her, and we are, we are now friends. We were talking just yesterday about writing a book together for children about how, what children learn from war and how they can deal with their grief, their pain, their loneliness and their confusion about it. So I've become, become friends with her and her family and uh, we'll see where that takes us. But you will see her. She sings, she welcomes you to this platform and she has been a, a blessing in my life. She is a daily reminder to me that freedom isn't free.